sweet story of Christ and his love. Tell of his power to forgive. Others will trust him if only you prove true every moment you live. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Out of my life, may Jesus shine. Make me a blessing, O oh, Savior, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone today. Give as was given to you. Love as the Master loved you. Be to the helpless a helper indeed. Unto your mission be true. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Out of my life, may Jesus. job this evening you may be seated all right so again this evening as advertised this morning we will have from Racine Wisconsin uh, brother Frank Williams filling in for Pastor Warner this evening Thank you. well it's a blessing to be here and I want to thank all of you for the kind accommodations that you provided for my son and I we have enjoyed being here it's sad that we have to leave after tonight. Uh, I, I mentioned about preaching a message on God's divine plan. And sure enough, as we arrived at church, we were wondering if God had a new plan for us. <laughs> if you're ever in need, call an engineer. He can take care of the problem. And uh, he uh, kindly did so. Mr. Neal. Uh, join me, if you would, please, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. God's divine plan. God's divine plan. As we read this, I, I want to read the first verse and then pray. And uh, you're going to see some unusual, strange, unique things in this passage of scripture. We're going to cover the entire chapter. Uh, don't be fearful. You, we will let you loose at the right time. And uh, just listen carefully. And we see that God already had a divine plan on how to get into the church uh, this afternoon. All right. Look at verse one with me. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or nor rain these years, but according to my word. I don't know about you, uh, but Ahab is the king. He's the king of Israel. At this time, there are two king, uh, two uh, uh, divisions, Israel is the northern kingdom, and Judah is the southern kingdom. Uh, Israel never has a good king during that period of time. And Judah, on and off, will have good kings, and they will have kings sometimes that do well but end up bad. Uh, it's interesting as you read through uh, Kings, Samuel, and Chronicles, you hear the names and you see the acts and the things that they do. And uh, one interesting thought that I might bring to your mind is, is that many of them start well, but finish wrong. Start well, but finish wrong. 
I would encourage you, it is God's plan for you to start well and finish well also. Notice now he's saying to the king, now, talking to a president, which we have of our country, is one thing, and talking to a king is world's difference. In the culture in this day in which this was written and said, if you spoke unkindly to the king, he just snapped his fingers, pointed to one of his soldiers, and the soldier would come and remove your head. It is easy to lose your head. And for this to happen with regard to Elijah is beyond my understanding why Elijah wasn't killed right away. Now, Elijah is a prophet of God. God had called him to be his prophet. And God evidently had spoken to him and said, you go to Ahab and you prophesy this. It's not going to rain. Now join me in the book of James chapter 5 and we'll see the New Testament tells us how long it's not going to rain nor have dew on the earth. And by the way, do you know what's going to happen when it does not rain nor dew? Back where I come from, uh, your humid temperature here is uh, very strong, much different than where I come from. We have Lake Michigan. We're right on Lake Michigan, and we get that uh, Michigan wind, and it comes in and cools things down for us. Uh, we don't have a lot of a 90 or 100 degree weather. Occasionally, that happens. But when you have the humidity like this, you have strong dew in the morning. Go out tomorrow, early in the morning, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The ground, the grass will be wet. The dew has fallen. But when Elijah prophesied, he said there's not going to be rain nor dew. So let's look in uh, James chapter 5, and you'll see what he's talking about because we begin with verse 16 and read there. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And uh, I preached a message on prevailing prayer and talked about Elijah. And so the illustration is given to us. He reaches, uh, James reaches back into the New Old Testament and gives this illustration. Notice in verse 17, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. I want to stop right there for a minute. He was an ordinary man. He wasn't anyone special. Sometimes we think, that many of the prophets were very special people. They were ordinary people called to do an extraordinary task. Ordinary people like you called to do an extraordinary task. Again, Elias was his man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Now, Let's take it here. I understand that you've had quite a bit of rain over the last several months. Is that true? Um, the ground is moist. The ground is soft. When there is no rain, the moisture is taken out of the ground, and the ground becomes hard. It cracks, and lo and behold, what's going to happen? Uh, crops are going to wither away. They're going to dry up. Uh, animals, which depend on the crops and depend on the, the nourishment of the field, uh, they're going to begin to die. People are going to begin to starve. We're talking about three and a half years. Three and a half years. I, I want you to notice that during this period of time, it's around 910 uh, B.C., 910 B.C., so it's many years ago. Elijah faces the king, and he talks to the king and tells him, it's not going to rain, and there's not going to be dew. And so the king is listening to what Elijah is saying, and he's thinking, it's not going to rain, not going to have dew, and I know I've repeated that many times. I want you to understand what he is saying. It's going to be a time of very dry drought, and things are going to die, things are going to perish. But I want you to note 
That's God's divine plan for Israel at that time. I want you to go back to the text and notice two words. They are uh, uh, combined words of Lord God. Every time you see the word Lord God in the scripture, that, that's an indication talking about God's relationship with his people. And so uh, when uh, uh, Elijah is prophesying here, he's saying that God that has a relationship and has blessed you has told me to tell you it's going to dry up and things are going to get worse and worse. It's God's divine plan. But I'm wondering about God's man. He is preaching God's word. He's facing death, but also starvation and dying of thirst. What does the Lord tell him to do? Notice in verse 2, he, the Lord gives him instruction, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and, uh, uh, toward the, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that it is before Jordan. So God's given him directions during this period of time and says that he's supposed to go to Jordan, the brook Cherith, and verse 4, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I want to point out a couple of words. There's a little adverb there. That means a place. I remember giving spelling tests to some of our students in school. And sometimes we would say there, meaning it belongs to you or someone. And then there, it's a place. Uh, God says, I'm sending you to a certain place. I'm going to take care of you, but you have to go to that place that I prepared for you to take, being taken care of. Notice the words here, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. You're to go to the brook Cherith. Uh, you're there you're going to have water, and also the ravens are going to come, and they're going to feed you. Now, ravens are carnivorous birds. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I don't look forward to roadkill. I'd rather have fresh food, and ravens will pick up roadkill. God sometimes has his divine plan and tells, he, tells us he's going to take care of us, in very strange or unusual ways. But the most important thing is that we need to be there where God is going to take care and fulfill his plan. Go on to verse 5 with me. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. Follow along with me, verse 6. And the ravens brought uh, him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now, wait a minute. I'm not sure, but God may be saying all we need to do is eat in the morning and eat in the, <laughs> in the evening time. But uh, anyway, that's how God took care of his man. Uh, I term these verses 1 through 7, and we'll get to verse 7 in a minute. Trust and obey. I don't know about you, but if God told me he's going to feed me with ravens, I think I would have a question in my mind. It may not come out of my mouth. Have you ever questioned what God's plan is for you? God's divine plan. He has a divine plan for you. Now, I know that on Sunday evening, most of the time, it's Christians. And so the message is for Christians. But if you're here and you're lost and without Christ, God's divine plan for you is to be saved. And to be saved tonight. Not to put it off. Not to wait. Uh, do it tonight. Look at verse 7, and we finish this part. Trust and obey. You see, the servant of the Lord, Elijah, had to trust and then obey what God had said. I was... Uh, by the way, I enjoyed the fellowship that we had with the young men today that took us out to eat, uh, Ryan and, uh, and uh, Neil back there. We had uh, a good time of food and fellowship together, discussing a few things that I remember saying to Ryan about trust. 
Uh, we see it here. In the Old Testament, the word is trust. In the New Testament, you don't see trust. You see the words faith and believe, or belief. Faith and believe. Trust in the Old Testament. Why is that? Because in the Old, in the Old Testament, they're looking forward to the Savior coming and the sacrifice being given and fulfilled for their salvation. So they trust in the future. Once Jesus Christ came, suffered on the cross, was resurrected, it's now faith and belief. Beloved, you need to have faith and belief today, but here Elijah had to trust God's guidance, trust what he is saying, trust where he is leading him. And so it came to pass that while he, uh, while, uh, that, that after a while that the brook dried up, and this is verse 7, because that there had been no rain in the land. Isn't it natural to say one day the brook's going to dry up? Don't you think that that was probably in Elijah's mind? Uh, the, Lord, the Lord's sending me to the brook Cherith, uh, and it's not going to rain, so the water, the brook is not going to be filled. By the way, it's a brook. It's not a river. So it's a small stream. And so what does he do? He waits there. All of a sudden, it dries up. Now we go to verses 8 through uh, uh, 16. 8 through 16, and we have faith and works. He trusted God to lead him to the brook Cherith and to feed him and take care of him there because the Lord said, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Notice verse 8 with me. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. There's the word, that adverb again, there. Dwell in that place at Zarephath. Behold, and he says this again, I have commanded a widow woman there, and here he uses the term sustain thee. He didn't say that with the ravens. They were going to feed and take care of him, but he didn't say he was going to sustain his servant. But here he uses the term sustain you. He is going to take care of you. In other words, he doesn't have to worry about something drying up or finishing that there he is going to be sustained. And I term this one faith and works. Faith and works. In the book of James, what does it say? Faith without works is what? Dead alone. When we have faith, we need to put our faith to work. In other words, what God tells us to do, we need to follow through with it. And I want to show you how that works here. It is God's divine plan. Faith and works. Faith and works. Elijah trusts the Lord, uh, God, to take care of him and trust in his word to do what he says. You and I need to do the same thing. It is God's plan. He gives us the word of God. We're to trust him and to have faith in what God says. Notice in verse 9, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. He says, Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee there. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he, had, when he, had, uh, when he came to the, the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, right there in that place, gathering of sticks. And he called to the her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. This morning I mentioned about Jesus being at the well with the woman at Samaria and to asking the woman to give him something to drink. It was not unusual in this culture for someone to do that. It would be no different than I would say to some of you ladies here, and I haven't said that, and I won't say that, but if I did, I would say, would you give me some water, please? And you would probably look at me as if I'm Daffy Duck. I'm not your wife, I'm not your servant, uh, why are you asking me to get water? Don't you understand that perhaps the widow woman was like that? By the way, what does it mean, Zarephath? He's leaving from the southern part of Judea and going to the north part of the land into Israel. And there is the place where uh, Jezebel and her race came from in that same area, in that same city. 
Jezebel, the notorious woman in Scripture. And notice he says, so he arose in verse uh, 10 and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, uh, and he told the, uh, the widow, fetch me water there. But that's not the end of it. Notice as we continue to read the scripture, what he says to this woman in verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Now, wait a minute. Um, I don't want just water. I don't want you to just get water for me. But I want you to bring a morsel of bread, some food, so that I can eat. But it gets worse. Not just that. Notice verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. I don't know about you, but I kind of think of a sinner. This woman is looking at hopelessness. She says, I don't have hardly anything, a little bit of meal and uh, a little bit of oil. And all is, that's in my mind is to take my son and we make one little cake, something for us to eat, and then we're going to die. Hopelessness. That's the sinner. The sinner is hopeless without Christ. They must have Christ as their Savior in order to have the hope. And this woman is telling Elijah, you're asking me to feed you and I barely have enough to just make a little morsel or two for my son and me, and then we're going to die, and yet you're asking me to do that, but it gets worse. That's not just it. Look at verse 13 with me. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, make for thee and thy son. Now, wait a second. The man of God is presuming on a widow woman. She's lost her husband already. And now, the only thing that she's thinking about, I'm going to lose my son and my own life, and yet you're asking me to make food for you and to take care of you, and when I don't have enough to sustain us? And he tells her, fear not. Now, he, she is listening to the man of God. She knows that he's a prophet. She knows that he's the man of God. And she's listening to what he has to say. By the way, faith and works. Faith and works. You need to put your faith to work. What God says in his word, you need to put it into practice. I know one of the easiest areas to talk about are your tithes and your giving. Are you... Fulfilling God's plan for you and for your church and doing by faith. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. I, I don't have much money. We're not talking about much. We're talking about doing what God has asked. God's divine plan. So he asked her and he says, feed me first. Fear not to do that. Verse 14. For thus saith the Lord God, there's that uh, combined word Lord God the relationship God of Israel the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth now he's giving her a prophecy or giving her uh, a reason why to feed him first you go ahead and feed me and God's going to take care of all of us He'll take care of me. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of your son. She likes that. And so notice what happens in verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Beloved, we need to trust what God says. You need to trust what God says by the preacher. 
Your pastor preaches to you. He teaches Sunday school. He preaches the morning message. He preaches in the evening. He speaks to you also on Wednesday night. Don't miss a service. Don't miss a time where the, God has an opportunity to speak to you specifically, just as Elijah, the man of God, spoke to this dear widow woman. And you're going to see the result in just a few minutes. You see, God spoke to her through his man. God didn't speak to her directly. He spoke to her through God's man. Do you understand that God speaks to us through his preacher, through his pastor? And you, you have uh, given yourself to your pastor here. Follow him. Serve. Honor him. Uh, I'm not saying make a, a, a God of a man. I'm saying serve the Lord God. But follow what the pastor is teaching and preaching. You see, faith works. And I might mention also faith will work. In verses 8 through 16, we see that. Now we come to the close of the chapter, verse 17 through 24. And the last portion is belief and obedience. Now we started out with trust and obey. Then we have what? Belief, uh, faith, and works. Now we come to belief and obedience. Notice what happens. Something unusual takes place. Uh, some of you may have had this taught before or this preach this message preached to you but listen carefully we're talking about I'm talking about God's divine plan for you I'm talking about now that you're saved and I take it that most everybody in the congregation saved now that you're saved God has a divine plan his first plan was for you to be saved now that you are saved God has a divine plan for you just as he did for Elijah and just as he did for the widow woman. But in verse 17, something weird and strange takes place. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that, uh, that there was no breath left in him. Wait a minute now. I thought God is going to take care of the man of God and the widow woman and the son. But all of a sudden, the son dies. Look at verse 18 with me. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? I want to stop there for just a minute. By the way, she is fussing at him. Her son is dead. And she has been taking care of the man of God. And the meal has uh, begin, continued to be supplied. So, so has the oil. But you're the man of God. And notice what she says here. Art thou come unto me to call my, my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And uh, he took him out of, uh, out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where that he abode and laid him upon his bed. This woman is saying, O thou man of God. She is not saying, O thou man of God. You know, it makes a difference how you say something. We can say, I love you. And we can say, I love you too. <laughs> and it means total different thing. I believe that she is meaning something, you claim something like this, and I'm supposing now, you claim to be the man of God and yet my son dies? You have come that my son might die? Let's follow on. Remember, now we're talking about belief and obedience. Notice in verse 20, And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, not, O oh Lord God, but, O oh Lord, my God. Have you ever called upon the Lord and talked to him? My Lord, my God, I'm about to talk to you about something. And notice it says here that he cried unto the Lord. What is he doing? The same that he did in verse 1. He prayed what? That it would not rain and would not have dew for three and a half years. 
Now all of a sudden he has her, her son and he's praying over the son, talking to the Lord. May I say to you, God hears your prayers. God hears your prayers and he will answer. Uh, but keep in mind, he will answer according to his will. His divine plan. God's divine plan. What is it? Well, first of all, it was that Elijah would be taken care of by ravens at the brook Cherith. Then God moved him to Zarephath and said that he had a widow woman that's going to sustain him there. God's divine plan. Now what is God's divine plan? Her son has died. And now the man of God has taken him and he's prayed over him. Again, verse 20. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom that I sojourn by slaying her, her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried with, unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come back into him again. The child died. The child just wasn't in a coma. The child died. He was out of breath. And now what's the man of God praying? He's saying, my God, I want you to put his soul back into him. Notice what happens in verse 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the, of the child was in, uh, into him again, and he revived. I like that term, he revived. In other words, life was restored to him. Sometimes we talk about revival. As a matter of fact, I think there was an announcement about prayer revival. That's revival is life coming back in. In the New Testament, the word quickened is talking about being made alive. You know, believer, you are to live on a daily basis in revival. God's divine plan for you. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see, thy son liveth. I want you to stop right there. Just a moment. We're going to finish in verse 24. But Elijah now is bringing the son to the widow woman and saying, see, see, your son now liveth. He is alive again. Notice what is said in verse 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now, by this I know that thou art a man of God. And I want to stop right there for a minute. Do you understand that she was following what he said and following through with it, feeding him, fetching him water, feeding him a meal first, and then giving to her son. And she didn't really believe that he was the man of God that he was saying he was. Because the little adverb now says, now I know that you're the man of God. And why is it? It finishes. Uh, Thou art the man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Truth. You know what you want to hear from the pulpit? The truth. God's divine plan is to communicate with his people. God speaks to the preacher or the pastor. And the pastor gives that message to the people. Listen to what God is trying to communicate to you through your pastor. Listen and listen well. And follow through. God's divine plan. Now, can you read your Bible and have God speak to you? Yes, and you should. Every day. Make that a, a, a practice. I remember years ago when I got right with the Lord, I began reading my Bible every day. And by the way, that was in 1966. That's many years ago. I read it again this morning and have continued to read it on a daily basis. I want God to speak to me. I want him to speak to me in preaching and tell me what I need to preach to the people. And to you folks tonight, you need to follow through with God's divine plan. 
He has a plan for each one of us. He has a specific plan for each one individually. He has an overall plan. If I were to say the overall plan or the general plan is be saved, be baptized, and serve him. Serve him with your life. Not only just salvation, not just baptism. If you haven't been baptized after you're saved, you need to follow through with baptism. After baptism, then you need to get busy, follow the Lord. Go to the pastor, ask him, what is it, pastor, that you need done? I'm making myself available. Is there a place in the church that I can serve and do or such? Today we ate lunch and I enjoyed a good lunch with Neil and, and Ryan and my son. And I asked the lady who came and served our table if there was something that we could pray about. And she says, yes, there is. Guys, do you remember what she said? She lost a brother and a sister. And then after that, I asked her, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? And her answer was what? Yes, she knew it. I said, great, but I'm going to pray for you. And I ask you to pray for her too. Her name is Bonnie. You know, it was God's divine plan that we eat in that restaurant and that that lady come to our table. Be aware of what God is doing and moving in your life. He's going to bring people to you. It was God's divine plan that the door was very secure tonight. But we called on an engineer to help take care of that door. Otherwise, we'd be outside, sweltering. <laughs> Isn't God good to us? We're inside enjoying the comforts of air conditioning things. What has God spoken to you about over this day? Has he talked to you about something specific that he wants you to fulfill and do? Is, is there some service that he's speaking to you? By the way, the pastor doesn't have to provide a means for you to serve. You can serve in any way. Anyway, you have neighbors to your right and to your left and across the street. Go there and knock on their door and invite them to come to church. Develop a rapport with them and then talk to them about their soul's deepest need. That's the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Are you fulfilling God's divine plan? Would you stand with me, please? My Father, tonight... These dear folks have come to hear a message that's given by you and preached by your servant. I pray that I've done that. I pray that they might take it to heart and follow, follow through with your divine plan for each one of them. Whether they're older or younger, you have a plan for each one of us. And so may we seek and fulfill that plan. May we trust and obey. May we believe or have faith and works and may we believe in obedience father work in our life do your perfect will this is what i ask in jesus name amen god's divine plan
Father, I just do thank you for tonight, Lord. Thank you for, um, Lord, just your, your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you that you do want us to know your will. And Lord, we thank you just that, that your will is good. And Lord, that we can trust it no matter, no matter what happens in our lives. Father, we thank you for, just, Lord, the fact that everything that happens in our lives, Lord, you're, you're working for good. And Father, I just pray that you would grow, grow each person's trust in you tonight as a result of, of hearing your word and just everything that's going on in each one of our lives. Lord, we do thank you for it, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. All right, thank you, Brother Williams, for, for the message. Thank you for, for uh, filling in today. And uh, do you keep uh, Pastor Warner and the rest of the team in your prayers this week as they are, I believe they're coming back on Friday. And... Uh, yeah, just just pray that uh, the Lord would get get much glory out of what goes on over in uh, Paris, France. So, with that, we'll have Ian if you can lead us in a song and then close in prayer. All right, we're gonna sing uh, from hymn number eighteen, uh, verse number one of hymn number eighteen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the message uh, that you've given to Brother Williams. Uh, please help us to trust in you uh, going throughout our week and uh, with small details.